a disclaimer before we start that we are trained scientists with all the personal protective equipment required to conduct these experiments. Please use caution with doing this at home. So today we're going to talk to you a little bit about earthquakes and tectonic plates. There's going to be some Zoom quote questions throughout, so feel free to participate when we cue you. So, what exactly is a wave? A wave is essentially any kind of disturbance. So, the kind of wave that we're most familiar with seeing is in the ocean. And if you've ever been to the beach, you've seen how waves crash onto the shore. So, there are a few things that actually cause different kinds of waves. Um, the first and most common one is wind passing over the surface of the water. So what happens is fast moving wind passes over the water and causes a change in surface pressure. There's increased friction and the wind passes its energy into the water to cause waves. So let's see how that works. So as you can see, as it gains a little bit more energy and a little bit of more speed, you see this repeated wave motion. And if we go even a little bit faster, you can see that there is this, this is repeated motion of the waves in the water going up and down, up and down. And this is because waves actually move in a circular motion. These are called oscillating waves. In the middle, far out into the ocean, there's actually columns of water and energy that are moving in circles. These circles move the waves up and back down, up and back down. However, it's interrupted on the shore by something like a coastal line or a beach. And that's what we see here. And instead, what we see instead of a circle is this repeated oscillating wave. So, I have a question for you. What will happen if we increase the energy of the wave? Will it get bigger? Will it get smaller? Will nothing change? Let's increase the speed of the wave. And looks like you guys got it. Yeah, so the waves get a lot bigger because they have more and more energy. So what happens when there's extremely fast moving wind far out onto the ocean and there's a huge tidal wave that's being caused at the beach line? And there's some towns and cities at the coastal line. Well, these kinds of cities actually form specific barriers to help protect them against the water and the wave that would crash and potentially flood them. So, the most uh, intuitive kind of one is this straight barrier. And so, you have this barrier over here that allows for the waves to crash and be pushed back into the water instead of flooding this beautiful city over here. And this works pretty well, but what happens when there's way too much and it just passes over the top of it? Well, a better design is actually a curved barrier. So because we have oscillating waves, um, what this allows the, the barrier to do is actually push that water back into the ocean in a more circular motion. And this protects cities far better. The second kind of wave is created by the gravitational forces of the sun and moon pushing and pulling the tides. Now, I have one more question for you. Is it possible to have an earthquake underwater?
Absolutely you can. And an earthquake underwater is actually what causes the third and maybe the most dangerous kind of wave, which is the tsunami. And Mana can actually show you a little bit more about how we can measure earthquakes. Hi there, I'm Mana. So I'm going to talk about earthquakes. So as we move live on Earth, we can occasionally get disturbed by the movement happening beneath the Earth's surface. So if we think about the Earth, the Earth has four layers. You have the inner core, you have the outer core, the mantle, and then the crust. Of these, the mantle and the crust. The mantle is the thickest layer of the Earth, whereas the crust is on the top, and it's the thinnest layer. So from these layers, we have these things called tectonic plates forming. Essentially, they are parts of the crust and the upper mantle that make up the tectonic plates. Now, generally, these tectonic plates are always moving around with each other, as had in those five. But sometimes, these tectonic plates, like the edges of them, will meet up with the edges of other tectonic plates, and that will cause friction between them. Now, as time goes by, there's this pent-up energy caused between them, and they want to just be able to move, as they always do. So, eventually, they will split up against each other, causing the release of that pent-up energy. Now, the area where this occurs is called a fault line. And essentially, the release of this pent-up energy goes up through the waves. So it goes up through the crust in the form of waves and causes the shaking of the ground that we all experience when we feel an earthquake. So now, there is a way that we measure the strength of an earthquake. And we use, it, we use a device called a seismograph, which is right over here. Let me show you. Basically, it has a stand over here, which has a marker attached. And essentially, when things in our surroundings move or shake around us during an earthquake, the marker will move, and there's a paper over here, and once it slides, it will create some lines on the paper, depending on how much the shaking is. So we can use that to tell how big or how strong an earthquake is. So I'm going to try to shake the seasonal graph a little bit here using a friend. And then we'll try to see what happens when we have like a small earthquake because we'll shake it to simulate it. So here we go. As you can see, it's shaking a little lot. You can see. But the lines on the paper are like fairly small and fairly close together. This is what happens when a seismograph records the waves of an earthquake and writes them down in the paper. This is what we call a four shot. So four meaning four, and the shock is just a shock. A four shock is basically a small earthquake that occurs before a much larger earthquake occurs. Now. If we think about a main shock, it's a larger earthquake. So I have a question for you. What do you think will happen to the lines on the seismograph when there is a bigger earthquake? And you have some options for you. A, they will be bigger and farther apart. B, there won't be any lines. C, they'll be smart, they will be smaller and closer together. Or D, nothing. The seismograph will break. So what do you think will happen? So, basically, the answer is A, they will be bigger and farther apart. Now, if you have a small earthquake, it's going to make some really small lines, right? But if you have a bigger earthquake with more energy coming all the way up through the crust, it's going to shake more, and therefore the pencil or the marker will shake more in the seismograph. ground. Now, we're going to try to simulate what we call a main shock. That is the much bigger earthquake that occurs after the fore shock, which was the smaller earthquake. Now we're going to simulate this using much larger violent shaking movements for the seismograph and we'll see what happens.
So here, you can see that the lines on the seasonal map are much bigger and much farther apart, like right here. See? You can see that properly. So you can see, you guys are correct, the main shop has a much larger, much farther apart waves to show the strength of an earthquake. Now, I have another question for you. If we think of a foreshock, as in the smaller earthquake that happens before a larger one, and then the main shock is the larger earthquake, what do you think an aftershock And here you also have some options. So, most of you guys got it correct. So the answer is B, a smaller earthquake that occurs after the main shock. So it goes with the logic, right? A foreshock is a small earthquake that happens before the main shock. The main shock is the bigger, larger earthquake. And an aftershock is the shock that happens after the main shock. And it's much smaller, that is similar to the foreshock. So that's awesome, guys. That's pretty good. Thank you watching and then make sure that you enjoy the rest of your time. Watch your jump on me. Alright guys, we hope you learned lots about earthquakes and tectonic plates. Um if you have any questions you can type it in the chat and let us know and we will do our best to answer. Perfect. So we got a question here from someone. They said, the duration of tracing a seismograph will be based on the speed of the paper and the recording material as it passes the recording device. So the amplitude would be larger, but would they be farther apart? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Please? Sure, yeah. So they're saying the duration of the tracing of the seismograph is dependent on how fast the paper mm -hmm. moves, right? Yeah. So they're asking, um, the amplitude would be larger, but why would they be further apart? Based well, on how fast I think it's gonna depend on how far, like how quickly you're able to speak, like to be able to pull out the paper. Now for this one, this is a bit of an artificial, like it's a more like um it's like a model of a seismograph, but then some people will use more accurate, more precise models as well. We are using this for the purpose of demonstrations. However, generally, if you want to be able to pull out the paper, you want to be able to pull it out consistently. So we could also have like farther out like waves occurring, like farther apart from each other, just because it takes longer for the waves to like come back towards the middle. And then yeah, you would just want to make sure that your pulling out is consistent. And I tried to do that, but it, it could be possible that it wasn't as consistent. But they could also be farther apart as well. The amplitude will definitely be a lot higher and they could be farther apart. Does that answer your question? And then we have another question here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to answer off the top of your head, but it's asking, what is the tallest tsunami ever recorded? I don't know the answer to that one, but that's certainly, uh, it's certainly a great question. Do we have any other questions? Uh, no, I think there are no more questions coming in. So if there are no more questions, we, invite, we hope that you really enjoy the rest of your, of your time at Fun with Thank you. Thank you. Bye.